Welcome back to the Tax Equity Modeling course. And in this lesson, we will talk about the economic effect in the special allocations in the partnerships. We mentioned in the earlier lessons that IRS will respect the special allocation if it has an economic effect and meets the substantiality test. And in this lesson, we will focus on the explanation of the economic effect. So, what happens if the allocations lack the economic effect? Well, in that case, the IRS will recalculate the allocations of the tax items according to the partner's interest in the partnership. This would be detrimental to the tax equity returns because recalculation of the allocations means less losses and tax credits to the tax equity partner. So, what does it mean that the allocation has an economic effect? There are certain IRS rules with regards to the economic effect, and if the allocation of the tax items meets those rules, then that allocation is deemed to have an economic effect. So, the allocation is deemed to have an economic effect if, number one, the capital account for each partner is maintained in accordance with Section 704B of the tax code. So, Section 704B provides detailed instruction on the capital accounts. Number two, the liquidating distributions have to be made in accordance with the capital accounts. Number three, the partner with the deficit in his capital account must restore that deficit upon the partnership liquidation. So, the capital account is not allowed to go negative unless the partner commits to restoring the deficit. So, what is the capital account? Well, it is an account, which shows the value of the partner's investment net of the required adjustments required by Section 704B. The purpose of the capital account is to prove that the partners are in true partnership and that the allocation of tax items affect partners' as wealth. So, let's take a look at the capital account structure. We start with the capital account opening balance. And then we have to add the equity investment to the capital account balance, so the partner's investment into the partnership increases his capital account balance. Then, we have to make a number of adjustments, and the first adjustment is the loss allocated to the partner. The loss allocated to the partner decreases his capital account. Next is the income allocation to the partner, which increases his capital account balance. And finally, cash distributions made to the partner decreases his capital account. So. Summing all of the items, we get to the capital account closing balance. Note that in year one, we are building the project. Therefore, we will not have a loss or income or cash distributions in year one. Therefore, in year one, the capital account will show the value of the equity investment in the project. And then in later periods, we will make the adjustments to the value of the equity investment in the capital accounts. Having now been introduced to the capital accounts, Let's review a numeric example of a hypothetical partnership. First, we will make assumptions about the partnership's income, operating loss, and cash flow. We will assume that the project's life is eight years, and in year one, we will be building the project. And from year two, the project will be generating the losses, income, and cash flow. From year two to year four, the project will be generating losses of 60, and from year five to year eight, the project will be generating income of 55. The project will be generating a cash flow of 55 from year 2 to year 8. Then we've got our allocation percentages, and we will assume that from year 2 to year 5, we will allocate 99% of the tax items to partner A, and the allocation will drop to 5% from year 6. And then, we've got the cash distributions, which will be 20% from year 2 to year 5, and will drop to 5% from year 6 to year 8. So. These allocations of the tax items and cash benefits resemble the allocations we've got in our case study. Then, to arrive at the tax and cash items allocated to Partner A, we will multiply the tax and cash items generated by the project by Partner A's allocation percentages. We will furthermore assume that Partner A will make an equity investment of 100 in the partnership in year 1. So, now, with all this information we can build the capital account for Partner A. We start with the capital account opening balance in year one, and since it is the beginning of the project, the capital account opening balance will be zero. The equity investment by partner A is 100, and then in year one, there is no loss, no income, and no cash flow generated by the project, therefore, those items will be zero. So, the capital account closing balance will be 100 in year one. In year two, the capital account opening balance is equal to the closing balance in the last period, 
therefore, it will be 100. We won't have any equity investment in year 2, so equity investment will be 0. In year 2, we now have a loss of 59.4 allocated to partner A. So, this number will be included in the capital account. We do not have any income in year 2, because the partnership is not generating any income yet. So the income allocation in the capital account will be zero. And next, we've got the cash distribution of 11 to partner A in year two. And therefore, we will include this 11 into the capital account. Note that cash distributions have to be subtracted from the capital account balance. Therefore, we will flip its sign from positive to negative. So, in year two, the capital account opening balance is 100. And then we have to subtract the loss allocated and cash distributed to partner A. So we get to the capital account closing balance of 29.6. Year 3 opening balance is 29.6, and we do not have any equity investment in that year. And the loss allocated to partner A is again 59.4. We do not have any income in year 3, and the cash distributed to partner A is 11. Note that now loss allocated and cash distributed to partner A exceed the capital account's opening balance, and therefore, the capital account closing balance will be negative 40.8. So, we have a deficit in the capital account of 40.8. In year 4, we begin with a deficit of 40.8. We do not have any equity investment, and we again have a loss of 59.4 allocated to partner A, no income, and cash distributions of 11. So, the capital account deficit will now increase by the amount of loss in cash distributions. We will start year 5 with the increased deficit, and we do not have any equity investment in year 5. Note that from year 5 onwards, the partnership is profitable and will generate income, so there are no losses allocated to partner A, and the income allocated to partner A is 54.5 in year 5. And then, we've got the cash distributions of 11 in year 5. So in year 5, the deficit of the capital account will decrease by the amount of the income allocated to partner A less the cash distributions, so we will have a reduced deficit in the capital account. In year 6, we begin with a negative 67.8, and there is no investment and no losses in year 6. We've got an income allocated to partner A, but now it is significantly lower because of the reduced income allocation of 5%. And the same is true for the cash benefits. The distribution percentage of the cash flow went down from 20% to 5%, so we've got a reduced cash distribution to partner A. Note how the income allocation and cash distribution are equal and they cancel each other and do not affect the capital account balance anymore. In year 7, we've got the same picture, with no equity investment and no losses allocated to partner A. The income allocated and cash distributed to partner A are equal again, so they do not affect the capital account, so the deficit of 67.8 persists. Year 8 will be the same as year 7. So. We've got the capital account for partner A, and in the next few lessons, we will build a capital accounts for the tax equity partner and the sponsor in our financial model.